circle around God's child. Get up off of your feet. Quit being religious this morning. We got one who didn't come through. And you're sitting on your seat like you don't know what's going on. God is tired of us playing church. This is what it's about. It's about being real with God. And that's some stuff we all got to give up. Whatever it is, your one thing is. You got to give it up. And if you can't give it up, God can't do nothing with you. You got to submit. Cast all of your cares upon him. He want it all. He want all of you, not part of you. Every drop, every drip. And I'm proud of Debbie this morning. Because I knew what it took. That's my friend. That's my girl. And let me tell you one thing. It is not something that I did not know about. She can tell you. I knew. I'm Debbie's mama. And I have spanked Debbie. Have I not? When she need to be spanked. I don't play with Debbie. She knows it. And I know I have made her angry a lot of times, and you think I care? Not at all. Because I loved her that much. And she know I love her. And I told her this morning, I said, you know the reason why you and I love each other? Because you can't be phony with me. You got to be real with me. And I'm real with you. And that's the truth. And that's why I love her and that's why she loves me. And that's why, how I am with everybody. Either you like me or you don't. Because what you get is what you see. And that's the truth. I'm proud of you, girl. Amen. Debbie shared her heart. We're not asking everybody to share your heart with us, but share it with the Lord right now. And uh, just be honest with God. We're talking about truth in the men's class. It's something about when you come into that truth. See, that's light. And now she's found out that even though things in her life that she knew wasn't right, now she's confessed that to us, which I've known Debbie for 20 some years, and I know the struggle she's had, and we've prayed to. Susan and me have always prayed. We pray for everybody. We know some of your things, and my goodness, if we just excommunicated, we wouldn't have anybody in the church. <laughs> and if no for, probably the first one I'd have to excommunicate would be myself. <laughs> but, but you see, love covers a multitude of sin. We, we don't. We're not saying we agree with anything, but we hate sin because it's bondage to, to, to all of us. And you may have things in your life right now, and let's just trust God that as the days go by, we're going to see greater testimonies like this of God delivering power uh, in all of our lives. And I don't mind sharing whatever's in my life. You've heard most of the stuff that, that, uh, that I've been delivered from. And the biggest thing I've been delivered from is myself. <laughs> oh, what a great deliverance that is. So let's just all be honest with God right now. I want everybody to say, Lord, Lord you, know you know what's in my life. In my life. And, whatever and whatever is in my life, in my life that, does that does not honor you, deliver me. Deliver and I give you the praise you the and the glory. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Now, we don't know. In the weeks ahead, I expect to hear some testimonies of things that you've been delivered from. And so let's sit down and have a What you have on your mind? Oh, nothing. You just hold, you're just holding her up. <laughs> I'll say that, you know, what she did today is boldness. Yes. Amen. 
You know, we all got stuff we'll never whisper to ourselves, barely. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we, there's some things we do personally that we won't even say to ourselves. Right. And she got up here and honestly, and that's the truth. Yes. Don't look at me like that's not the truth. Anyone, including me, every one of us. So all these years, she's been walking around with that weight upon her that if they know, if they find out. The enemy lied to her because if she would have came forward and told responsible Christians who could deal with it with her, she could have got delivery. But now she knows the truth. So like she asked, the secrecy, she said, Lord, not, he, she didn't pray to remove this from her friend. She prayed, help me be able to help my friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And God honored that. Yeah. Amen. God said, whoa, now I got a willing vessel that I can operate through now. Yeah. Now he'll do things through you. And because of that, other things will bubble up through other people. Yeah. Yeah. But the honesty you have in your heart, yeah. that's something to be admired. That's right. Yeah. That is something to be admired. So when you think you're the worm in the cabbage patch, girl, you up on the mountaintop. You up there in some whirly, whirly, you in the, spinning around in heaven. Because that honesty blesses you so much. God rewards that honesty. He forgets that sin. That sin's done. And he wasn't counting it against you while you thought he was. But now you deliver to that. And you're so bold and honest. You're gr- careful. He's going to work through you. So be ready. Be the willing vessel that's bold and courageous to carry out his mission and his gospel. Thank you. At 2 o'clock, at two o'clock. <laughs> at, at, at two o'clock in the morning now, you know. Okay, what you got, son? I just wanted to come forward and have Debbie pray for me. Oh, okay. Pray for him. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for Floyd. I thank you for making him the wonderful man that you've made him, the way you wired him. We thank you for him, Father. Uh, You love him, Jesus, and he loves you. And Jesus, you're awesome. And we thank you so much for loving Floyd. And Father, whatever he needs, you take care of it right now. I pray for it. For I pray that he prosper, be in health. And prosper in his spirit. Father, prosper financially. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless his family from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Father, because you're an awesome God and you're a good, good father. And I thank you so much for Floyd and I thank you that you love him and that you love all of us, Father. And thank you for your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, Put. Put Romans 15, verse 1, 2, and 3 up there, and then we'll sit down, and then we're going to turn it over to the next speaker. Everybody may be seated, if you can. Don't worry about the time. All right, here we go. I've been, we've been teaching this for a long time. Everybody look at the board. Everybody look at the board. Are you ready? Everybody's looking at the board. We who are strong in our convictions and of our robust faith are to bear with the failings and the frailties and the tender scruples of the weak. How many understand that now that we've had a testimony? See, We are to help carry the doubts and squirms of others and not to please ourselves. Next verse. Let each one of us make it a practice to please and make happy his neighbor for his good, for his true welfare, to edify him or her, to strengthen them and build them up spiritually. Next verse. For Christ did not please himself, gave no thought to his own interests, but as it is written, the reproaches and abuses of those who reproached and abused you fell on me, on Jesus. So when someone uh, reproaches you or abuses you, Jesus already took care of that too. Well, are you ready? All right, let's give the Lord a hand for our next speaker, <laughs> Michelle Donner. Hallelujah. Before we start recording, if y'all just give me just a second here. Father, we thank you so much 
for this day, for the opportunity that you have given me to be able to speak today, Father. And I pray that you will speak, Father, that you will, as, as we all prepare as ministers to give the word, Father, that you would take off of these pages those things that you would have delivered today and help us, Father, to hear what the Spirit is saying to us individually. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, today we are talking about foundations. What is holding you up? What is holding you up? Let's go ahead and talk. As you know, I always go into the whole thing in the natural first, and then we'll talk about it in the spiritual. So let's just talk about foundations that we have in this world. My husband and I bought a piece of property about 17 years ago, about as the age of David. David's going to be 17 in September. Is that scary or what? I have a 17-year-old. <sighs> we bought this house on half acre of property with the goal of actually moving the house at some point on one side of the property, opening it up to build more homes. Well, that is going to happen between this year and next year, like December through March is going to happen in that time frame. Let's go ahead to the, the next frame. The piers underneath the house, this house is almost 100 years old. It was Charleston Farms. It was the original farmhouse for the subdivision of Charleston Farms. But now it's, you know, it, it, the, those piers are a little old and they have shifted. And because of that foundation, thank you, because of that foundation being shifted, things start happening to the house that we were not expecting. Let's check out the next picture. Welcome to my front room. Next picture, please. And again, my front room has got two cracks going. So the doorways are shifting. We had not planned to do it like right now. We wanted to pay off everything and then do it. But as things have happened, the timing of God is amazing. We had a situation where Floyd is having to take some of his trailers that he had some of his scrap metal in. They have to be removed from the property. Um, our credit scores since the recession, as you know, both of us after the recession hit and everything else, our credit scores went crazy because we were struggling financially. Now our credit scores are up again. We're able to refinance the house because Floyd now has a uh, job working as a process server. He works all day, guys. He's working during the day moving boats. If he's not moving boats, he's doing scrap metal. In the evening, he's serving legal documents. So he has a regular paycheck now with taxes taken out, not as self-employed. And as you know, I've been working for um, Kevin Francis with New Leaf Landscape Construction as a bookkeeper, so I've got my regular paycheck. The bank is looking at our stubs now, not at the tax return that shows we're self-employed and we have all these deductions, so now we qualify for the loan. Amen. Remember, remember I told you about we, we were bringing in some workers from Mexico to help us in our job. Well, they have an apartment through December 1st. Well, believe it or not, the apartment's in my name already because of the things that we had to do through the work to be able to do that. The apartment's in my name, the electric's in my name, so guess where I get to live while the house is being moved? I was wondering where I was going to stay. My boss said, oh, just stay at the apartment after they're gone. <laughs> okay. The furniture is already there. Kids walk the school. The, kids, the school is next door, you guys. <laughs> my job is a block away. Floyd's process server job is two blocks away. Everything is right there. It is amazing. I, I'm just like, whoa, all at once. So yes, this is going to be a big thing. But see, all because the foundation, had we not known what was going on with the foundation, we would not have been able to move forward with some of these things. But God already knew and had already been planning everything well in advance and now it's just opening up, and it's going to be a lot easier than what we thought. 
<laughs> Floyd didn't even ask for his job. It just came to him. His, his, the guy that he's working for called him and said, hey, I need you to work. It just, things happen. God is awesome. Foundations are important. Some foundations might start with the piers that you saw on this first couple pictures. These are foundation or slabs that were left behind downtown Charleston that they're getting ready to build yet another building in that area. Another one, some have large piers. How many of you have seen this being built downtown under the bridges? If you'll go to the next one as well. Jonathan, um, oh, back up one, thanks. Jonathan has gone downtown and taken a lot of these pictures, you guys. He's done a phenomenal job. Yes, my 14-year-old skating through. These are old houses. If you go to the next, these are old houses. One more. Yeah. Those are even older than my house who have been downtown forever. Their foundations have been set so well that the tops are falling apart. So if you have a good foundation in the natural, whether it's a house or the next frame is a, a statue or doesn't matter what it is, if you have a good foundation, the house will be healthy. It won't have the cracks. It won't have the issues. We'll go on to the next. Trees. Think about the root system of a tree, the foundation of a tree. How many of you in here have ever uh, cut wood, logs, and you know how heavy they are when you try to lift them up, right? What about that tree? Do you know the root system has to hold that massive thing up? The foundation is so important. How about flowers? I love this picture, Jonathan. That one was so pretty. And if you could see this on your computer screen and not on the projector, you could see the actual purple lines through the flowers, how beautiful they are. They're just awesome. Even flowers have a foundation. They couldn't have even bloomed if they didn't have what they needed. Amen? Next frame, even our own world. Oops. Even our own world has a foundation. In Isaiah, and you do not have to turn to the scripture, uh, Rick, but in Isaiah 48, 13 says, My hand founded and established the earth, and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand together in obedience to carry out my decrees. Even our world has a foundation to be built on. Now, we have a plate here. My family's probably going to cry over this because I heard them complaining in the car. But do you think I could actually just break this plate? Do you think I could just snap it? Raise your hand if you think I can't. You don't think I can't? You don't want me to, that's why. All right, how many people think I can? Raise your hand if I can break the plate. No, I don't want you to. With my hands, just with my hands. My arms. All right, raise your hands if you don't think I can. Okay. You ready? No. <laughs> Why? Go ahead. Oh, ah, good. Okay. Floyd, you can glue it later if you want. Let's look at the next frame. This plate was made from a mold, a cast mold in China. And the design was by a woman named Mary. And when she designed these plates, they made the mold so that they could actually put the plaster in it and make them. If there is an imperfection in the mold itself, it will cause every single plate to be damaged later on. So the foundation of that plate that was set if there's an imperfection in it, every single plate is going to have an issue. Go to the next frame. On the back of this plate, you can see that little line going over to the side. Every single one of the plates that I have have an imperfection that has caused it to do this. Every single one. They are sad because I told them in the car what I was going to do to my plate, and they were not happy because they love their plates, but I hated to tell them that very short period of time they won't be here anyway because they're, they have a defect. 
if the mold that was used, again, has any imperfections, it will cause issues down the road. Foundations are important. They're extremely important. Um, let's go ahead and we'll come off those screens. Let's go to Hebrews. We're going to go to Hebrews 6. And we are going to zip through some scriptures today. And we are not going to do full-blown study on the foundational stones. If you want a booklet, I have done this, the study before. And I can get you a booklet. I think we have some in the other, in the fellowship building, on the actual foundational stones. But this tells us in chapter 6, we're going to look in verse 1 through 3 in Hebrews. Therefore... Let us go on and get past the elementary stage in the teachings and doctrines of Christ, the Messiah, advancing steadily towards the completeness and perfection that belong to spiritual maturity. Stop right there. Pastor Bob has mentioned this before. You have salvation, what God has done for you. You have what God is doing in you and what God is going to do through you. It is a process. He's telling the Hebrews here, look, it is time to move forward, no longer craving the milk, but let's go forward laying a foundation. Let's keep reading here. Let's not again be laying a foundation of repentance and abandonment of dead works, dead formalism, and of the faith by which you turn to God, or the foundations with teachings about purifying, the laying on of hands, the resurrection from the dead, and eternal judgment and punishment. These are all matters of which you should have fully, have been fully aware long, long ago. If indeed God permits, we will now proceed to advanced teaching. Now, the word foundation in these scriptures actually means something that's put down literally a subconstruction, something that is built, that is placed. Having this foundation in Hebrews set where you already know what these six foundational stones are is very important. If you do not understand them, please see me after the, the teaching and I will be happy to give you a booklet that goes in detail about these certain things. It, it, you name it, it's on there. It's pretty awesome. Think about when you were in your mother's womb, the very first foundation of your life, when your body was being created in your mother's womb, intricately created. That was a foundation for what was going to happen with your body for the rest of your life, right? I'd like for us to look at that. I wasn't going to go into that scripture. I really think we need to see that. Psalms 139, we're going to look at verse 13. Psalms 139, verse 13. For you did form my inward parts. You did knit me together in my mother's womb. 14. I will confess and praise you for you are fearful and wonderful and for the awful wonder of my birth. Wonderful are your works, and that my inner self knows right well. Verse 15. My frame, or my foundation, was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret, and intricately and curiously wrought, as if embroidered with various colors in the depths of the earth, a region of darkness and mystery. 16. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book all the days of my life were written before they ever, or before they took shape, when as yet there was none of them. Last verse, 17, how precious and weighty also are your thoughts to me, O God. How vast is the sum of them. You have a foundation you were created by God himself for a purpose. Amen? Well, then what happens? You're born into this world. Now you have parents. Some may have had one parent. Some may have had both parents. You may have been adopted. 
And at some point you had someone who was in authority over you that was setting yet another foundation in your life, teaching you how to brush your teeth, how to comb your hair, how to get dressed, maybe even teaching you about the Lord, maybe teaching you how to be angry at yourself. They may have taught you how to steal. They may have taught you how to smoke. They may have taught you how to always find fault in everything that you have, everything that you do. They may have been abusive to you. They may have been the most encouraging people on the planet. They may have been encouraging you to grow and to sky's the limit. You can go to college. You can do anything you set your mind to. They may have been the most powerful foundation builders in your life. But sadly, there are some who have not been good foundation builders. Maybe even some of us in here. But we have to take account and say, you know what, Lord? Even if we have not been the best foundation builders in our children's lives, we can correct that in a lot of ways by being there for them now. God is a God of forgiveness. He will forgive you. He will cover you. He will love you right where you are. And your children will know God because of your actions towards them in these days. These are the last days, and we have a responsibility. Curses that are over family lives, they, these foundational things that we have in our lives, there's a lot of times the enemy will come in on them and cause curses to follow families. Um, I'll just give you an example where you may find that the great-great-grandfather was an alcoholic, and then his son was an alcoholic, and then they were an alcoholic, and it follows down the family line. You may have... Uh, any kind of thing that you can think of, whether it's drugs, alcohol, you know, being in jail, whatever it is, those things tend to follow family lines. Do you know why? It has to do with the foundation that has been set in the lives of our, our relatives of days old. What I want to encourage you to do is to ask God, why? What is it that has caused me to struggle in these areas? Why is this a str You may find out that it's because of a family curse that has been passed down or that the enemy has seen an open door with your great granddaddy and next and kin and you start seeing, oh, wait a minute. And you know, one of the things I've had to struggle with is fear, big time fear. Don't ever ask me to speak in front of a group of people and look what God did. <laughs> really, Lord, you've got a sense of humor. But I was quiet in school. I had my friend Brenda, that was my friend. And I didn't really go outside of that friendship. I mean, you know, a couple people I was acquaintances with, like, hi, but I just did not interact with a lot of people. I was terrified. I was paralyzed. And a lot of that had to do with the foundation that was being laid in my life through my parents. But God. Yeah. But God. And I have known since I was a child that God had a calling on my life. Yeah. And when you know that you know that you know, and you submit to God, he will start working in you. Yeah. Almost every time I come up here to preach, I've got to fight that thing off. I can count on one hand in, oh my goodness, 30 years of preaching, how many times I have not been afraid. And I have spoken a lot. But here's my point. It is important that we look at the foundation of each of our lives and where we have come from. And I hate to do this because some of y'all do not want to think about your life and what it was like when you were growing up. But think about your foundation just for a minute and how your parents were in raising you. Christians, non-Christians, whatever it was. And think, is there something that was passed on to you that has been established as a foundation that you're actually jumping off of now? Well, maybe, maybe your dad talked to you very loudly and it made you feel uncomfortable. So now when you're in the presence of men, see that foundation's been laid, now when you're in the presence of men, you tend to kind of shy back. You don't want to, you know, speak. You feel inadequate or not able to communicate. I mean, I'm a female preacher for God's sake. You know, I'm telling you something I've gone through myself. So... We have to look at those foundational things that have been set up in our lives and make sure that they're not hindering us in our walk with God now. 
That's what's important. I'm going to say a lot of things in the last 15 minutes of this teaching. Take notes if you can. Spend quality time with God and ask him, Lord, what foundation has been laid in my life that is causing cracks? Because that plate, I could have still used it in the microwave. I could still cook food on it. I can still serve food on that plate. Well, maybe not now, but I could have before I broke it. But one crack, just one wound, one wound that won't go away can cause so much pain for so many others. I can have the most beautiful hot plate full of food and go to give it to someone and boop, now she's burning from the, from the food. It is so important, so important. I know this is a serious message, but we're going to have some fun too. So then, here we are. We've gone through our lives with our family. Now we get married. And now we're not just dealing with our foundation, but their foundation too. This is where the fun starts. Because now we're raised one way, and they're raised another way, you better know that you 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 married the right person, which I know that I know that I know that I married the right person. Because God will blend your lives together in order to build a foundation for yet the next generation. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I, let's just kind of go from there. Now you have a spouse. Now you have children. You have another foundation to lay for your children. What foundation do we lay for our children? A lot of parents will lay the very same foundation they had. And sometimes it's a good one. Sometimes it's not. We have to be careful to make sure that the foundation we're laying for our children is under God's rule, not under what we went through. So the, believe it or not, the scripture that started this whole thing I wouldn't say it started the whole thing. The house started the whole thing, when the whole foundation thing. But the scripture that God gave me had to do with Moses and Aaron. And we're going to look at this in Exodus 17. And while we're turning there, I would like to talk a little bit about friendships and foundations in friendships. People that we know that are our friends, the character that they have. Let, let me just ask you this. What characteristics do you look for in a friend? Raise your hands, just tell me. What do you look for in a friend? Deborah. Loyalty. Loyalty. Be there when they need to be there. Who else? Yes, ma'am. Honesty. Honesty. That was Faith. She told me that earlier. To listen. Be a good listener. Yeah. Communicate. Hello. Anybody else? Come on. Non-judgmental, not critical. Someone you can talk to that's not going to take your information and tell somebody else, and they told two friends, and they told two friends, and now you got the whole everybody knowing. Pastor Bob, understanding, understanding not just listen, yeah. but really understand, because we can be hearers, <laughs> but not really hearing. Right. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Build you up, hold you up. Oh, what's holding us up? Who else? Yes, ma'am. Be a Christian. Someone who has the same mindset. Someone who's going to be able to pray with you. Someone you can identify with. Yes, sir. Respectful. 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 Not just take over the conversation and not have anything to do with you, but be respectful and allow both, you know. Oh, man, we got the brother and sister over here fighting here. Um, let's see. Ladies first, yeah, sorry. Motivational. Motivational. Ah, someone who can motivate you. Because, say this is my group of friends, and I, Faith and I talked about this earlier. If I'm the most spiritual, or the most, I'm the one everyone's coming to for counsel, and I've got ten friends, and I'm the one who's the one, how am I ever going to grow any higher than where I am? I need to have people who are more spiritual than me, who've walked it longer, where I can go to, or I'm not going to grow from where I am. Yes, sir. Trustworthy. 
That goes hand in hand with what Ms. Linda was saying. Be able to trust them with anything. Yes, ma'am. Integrity. Everybody say integrity. integrity. We just learned about Willie Tillman's dad was a man of integrity yesterday at the uh, funeral. Yes, ma'am. Someone that's going to tell you the truth, like Mama Rose. <laughs> How many of you can handle a Mama Rose in your life? <laughs> you have my permission. Everybody raise your hands. Oh, some of y'all ain't going to raise them a second time because you know what I'm getting ready to do, right? You have my permission to call me at any time and say, Miss Michelle, I got something I need to talk to you about. <laughs> That thing you said, did, did, whatever it was. And we'll pray together, I'll repent, and we'll get it right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So is everyone cool with Mama Rose calling you? <laughs> we need mothers in the body of Christ to help us, or else our foundation may be going crazy. Because you know when you're driving, all you got to do is turn that wheel just a little bit. And next thing you know, you're way over there in England. Yeah. And all it was is just a little turn. Right. Just a little bit off. Right. So we have to help each other. But you know what? If someone comes to us and says, you know what you just did is offensive, what are we going to say? Well, I didn't mean it to be offensive. Hey, what's your problem? And we get all, def we get crazy. We are crazy, people. We are crazy. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> Flesh is flesh. I don't care whose bones it's on. We're going to respond the same way. But if you're walking in the spirit, your spirit man's stronger and you can receive correction. But if your flesh is stronger and you've been feeding it, do it then you're going to be like, yes, ma'am. You can't carry your cross and a fence at the same time. That is powerful. Amen. I love that. All right, so think, these are all the characteristics of friendship that we look for. Now here's the question. Do you have those characteristics to be a friend to someone else? And I can honestly say, out looking at this congregation, the majority of you definitely have that because you're my friends. <laughs> Well, who is, just think about it. Who's your best friend? Now, and Jesus is our best friend, I understand, but who's your best friend? Does this friend build you up? Do they strengthen your walk with God? How do you build your friend up? Are you building that person up, strengthening them in their walk? Your best friend may be your spouse. Are you building your spouse up? Are you encouraging them? Are you strengthening them, holding them up? Remember the title of this is Foundations. Foundations, what is holding you up? Let's think about our foundation. So again, here we go to our friend Moses. We know there's friends throughout Scripture, David and Jonathan, Elijah, Elisha. We've got Paul, Timothy, and all his entourage. We've got uh, Ruth and Naomi. Who said a mother-in-law had to be something you didn't cringe about when they come around? That's something the world came up with. Come on, y'all. It is a lie. My husband loves my mother. Absolutely adores my mother. She is welcome in my home any time, and I know it. And she adores him. They're probably closer in age than he and I are. <laughs> I'm sorry, no. My dad, my dad is like eight or nine years older than my mom, and Floyd is eight years older than me, so it puts the two of them kind of closer together, about eight years or more. You know, it's funny. Uh, anyway, let's look at Exodus 17, and we're going to look in verse 8. Exodus 17, verse 8. And we're going to read from 8 through 13. So, Rick, you can just scroll through them as we're reading, sir. Verse 8 through 13. Then came Amalek, descendants of Esau, and fought with Israel at Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out of out men and go out, fight with Amalek, 
Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said, and he fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the hilltop. When Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And when he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they started growing weary. So the other men took a stone, and they put the stone under him, and he sat on it. Then Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on either side. And one, so his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. 13. And Joshua mowed down and disabled Amalek and his people with the sword. And the Lord said to Moses, write this for a memorial in the book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under the heavens. That's good. Not good that, yeah, but, well, yeah. So, for right now anyway. So here's Moses. He sat down on a rock, a foundation. Now these guys are no longer standing next to him holding his arms up. They're sitting beside him. How can you stand and hold the arms of a person who's sitting down on a rock? So they're staying with him. When he was standing, they were standing. When they were sitting, they, were, you know, they went with him to hold his arms up. They were his support. They were what was holding him up. But because his friends were holding him up, the body of Christ was prevailing. The Israelites were prevailing. So whose arms are you holding up? Because if you're holding someone's arms up, you may actually be the reason why the body of Christ makes it. It is important. Even if, if it's one person that you're ministering to, it is worth it. I had a, a young lady that would call me and she'd say, I'm so bored, I have nothing to do. And I said, I've got a lot. You are welcome to come visit me at any time. You will no longer be bored. She would giggle. And this person doesn't normally laugh out loud. But I did. I put her to work. And she was amazing. Amazing. Supported my ministry. Helped me with my library, the books, the cataloging, following up with people to get things back. I mean, she was amazing. And today, and you, you know her, Regina Boudreaux, she was dealing with, with her uh, seizures and all because of um, something that was going on in her head. She had surgery. She overcame the surgery. And now she's working full time and is like, I'm so busy. I have so much to do. <laughs> she's helping Joey and his mom, and she's working. So, yeah, amazing what God will do if you just reach out. So here we have Moses. They put that stone under him to support him. They did whatever it took to support him. Now we're going to stop and look at the last foundation that I would like to talk about. So we've talked about the foundation of our physical bodies when we were in our mother's womb. We've talked about our parents and the foundation that they have built. We've talked about the foundation that we pass on to our children the foundation that maybe your spouse has that can affect the way you pass your foundations down to your children. We've talked about friendships and how to have good, solid friendships. There were some friends that were no longer friends. Once I was spirit-filled and soaring for God, there were some friends that, that were no longer friends. Was it grievous? Absolutely. My heart ached for them because they were not saved, because they did not understand. And there were some of those friends who were not saved who are still my friends today because they have a respect for what I believe and they honor me in that and it is not a problem. The Lord, even Jesus himself, was hanging around with the tax collectors and sinners but he did not allow them to influence him and his decisions. So he was there for them and that's an honorable thing. Let's talk about Jesus. How about the foundation of friendship 
with Jesus. He is our friend. He is not just some guy in the sky or someone who died on the cross. He is our best friend that we can confide in at all times. He laid down his life for who? His friends. He laid down his life for his friends. You can see that in John 15, verse 13. Again, remember the plate. If the mold that was used to form that plate had any imperfections, then all the plates would have imperfections, which they did. But if Jesus is the perfect mold that holds us up, and we're relying on his strength to hold us up, then what's going to happen with us? God doesn't make junk. He doesn't make junk. And Pastor Bob had a scripture that he had up on the board in 1 Peter 1.22 earlier that, had, that talked about what our part... Let's go ahead and look at that. 1 Peter 1.22. Since by your obedience to the truth... Whose obedience? Our obedience to the truth through the Holy Spirit. You have purified... Who's purified our hearts? We have purified our hearts for the sincere affection of the brethren. See that you love one another fervently from that purified heart. Next verse. In verse 23. You have been regenerated, born again, not from a mortal origin, seed or sperm, but from one that is immortal by the ever-living and lasting Word of God. Think about this, folks. You have been made a new creation. Old things are passed away. Now you have a foundation not made with human hands. You have a foundation that's been set. Jesus Christ is the rock. He is our foundation. He is the rock that we're set on. Amen? Amen? He is. He is. So, in Isaiah 41.10, he will hold us up. In Colossians 1.17, let's look at that, uh, Rick, on Colossians 1.17. And he himself existed before all things. And in him all things consist cohere and are held together. 1 Corinthians 3.11 You didn't know there was this much in the scripture about foundations, did you? For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is already laid, which is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Amen? And you don't have to go to this one right away, but again, this is in Isaiah 28, 16. Listen carefully. I am laying a Zion, in Zion a stone, capital S, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for the secure foundation firmly placed. He who believes, trusts in, relies on, and adheres to that stone will not be disturbed or give way in sudden panic. Matthew 7.24. And we can turn to that one. Matthew 7.24. So everyone who hears these words of mine, capital M, Jesus, and acts upon them, obeying them, will be like a sensible, prudent, practical, wise man who built his house upon the rock. How can we build our spiritual home? Because we are spiritual homes. How can we build it? Listen to the words of Jesus. Well, we have the Holy Spirit living in the inside of us too, who reminds us of those things that have been spoken. So we are without excuse. In America, anyway, we have our Bibles, we've got the Holy Spirit to follow. But who wants to be told what to do? Are you willing? I just saw something, so I'm having to explain this. 
Are you willing to have a noose wrapped through your nose with a rope on it? Now, feel, oh, everyone feel that little thing right there. All right, wrap something around that right there. And have someone lead you. Well, let me ask you this. If you're pulling against it, how fun is that? But if you let God guide you, let him guide you, it's a lot easier than getting jerked with that little thing right there. Ow. That would not be fun. Sorry. I had the opportunity to do that with my great-grandfather with, with oxen and all this. So yeah, it's just a whole another planet. In Ephesians 2.20, it says, Built on the foundation of the prophets, apostles, with Jesus as the chief cornerstone. 1 Timothy 6.19, storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is life. Having a good foundation gives us life, folks. Gives us life. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. This is in 2 Samuel twenty two forty seven, And exalted be God, the rock of my salvation. Then we have David in Psalms, Psalms 18.31, and we can look at that, Psalms 18.31. Let's read this one together. For who is God except the Lord? Or who is the rock save our God? He is our rock. Psalm 62, verse 2. He only is my rock and my salvation, my defense and my fortress. I shall not be greatly moved. You know why the piers under my house started to shift? Hold that thought. Rick, can you get uh, the last scripture? Psalms 94, verse 22. Psalms 94, verse 22. The reason the piers were shifting under my house is because our road is kind of at a slant like this. And our house is here. And all the rainwater from up there comes flooding down all the way that way into Philbin Creek. And when that happens over a long period of time, and you've got the flood back in October, and then one before that, pushing all that water, it will shift the foundation. God is getting ready to flow by his spirit, and the water is coming. How strong is your foundation? Is your house going to show up with a bunch of cracks, and then a little bit of weight on it's going to pop it, a little bit of pressure is going to make it snap, you're going to lose it, or is your foundation strong, strengthened? But the Lord has become my high tower in defense, and my God, the rock of my refuge. Who do you run to whenever things are going crazy? Deborah got on her face, and she was desperate. She wants God to move through her. Raise your hand if you want God to flow through you. And I'm telling you, it is time to submit and just let him do the work. Don't get up in his face because he's pointing something that you need to work on in your life. Don't get mad at him. Submit to him. If he sends a mule to speak to you, listen to it. <laughs> if he sends your child, yeah. if he sends your, the person you just absolutely could never receive anything from, receive it as a thus saith the Lord. Let him do the work in us because it goes from salvation then he does the work in us, and then through us, through us. So let's get our foundation squared away. Keep that word, foundation. What's holding you up? What is provoking you in every action that you do? And walk through it in your prayer time with God, and let him do what he's going to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.